Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Whisker Sticks Fishing. Today we're showing you some family friendly, safe places to fish all around the greater Cincinnati area. If you're handicapped, if you can't get out in the hot or cold easy, you need to be close to your car, if you got small animals or kids with you, here's some places you can check out. And hopefully we'll get some fish. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we're out here on the Ohio River. This is called the uh, Anderson Ferry, and it's a ferry that'll take your car across the Ohio River to the Kentucky side via ferry boat. So um, we're actually parked maybe 50 feet right up the hill here. We're real close to the car. And we're fishing. spots we're on the Great Miami River uh, really easy places to get to uh, easy places to manage and fish and this is spot number three uh, I was gonna go show you a place at East Fork but uh, they haven't drained it yet it's up a little bit still and it's pretty muddy so um, I didn't want to take Mia there yet but we're gonna get to that one in a, in a future video today we're using carp for bait just common carp we uh, cut some fillets off, and if you guys don't know, carp is a very great bait for blue cats. And that's what we're gonna try to catch today. Hopefully we'll get a nice springtime flathead too. But blue cats love carp, it's catfish candy. because it's easy access for almost anybody. If you got a broken leg and you're in a cast, you can still get out here. Wheelchairs, eh, maybe, depends on how dry the dirt is. You could obviously fish right by the ramp, but uh, then you'll kind of be in the way of the, the ferry boat a little bit. You don't want you don't want a propeller to get a hold of your line and cut up your line or even take a rod in by accident. But what some people don't know about these types of spots out in the public is especially with that ferry boat, all those shadow hang around that boat ramp. That boat just chums them up. So it's a good feeding ground, especially if you want to catch a lot of small ones. And I've been getting some taps on this one on my Muddy River Flathead rod, so maybe we'll get one. It's been a few minutes on this bait since it got hit a few times, so we're gonna check it and make sure they didn't take it off. I don't think they did, because carp is a very tough meat. And if you've ever tried to hook a filet of some carp, you see how tough that hide is underneath the scales. Nah, I still got it. Okay, so here's what we're using, guys. We got a four ounce snagless sinker. We got a nice fillet of some carp. I just got it hooked over one side, let the blood expose out. We're gonna put it back out there. Stay. Stay.
when you're fishing a big river like the Ohio River, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee River, all these big wide rivers, it doesn't really matter what kind of rod you use. The longer the rod, the farther out you'll get, which can benefit you sometimes. Sometimes it's better to fish closer to the bank. So I got my seven foot rod here. This is the Muddy River Flathead rod. And then I got a seven six Big Cat Fever rod. It wouldn't hurt to have a 10 foot rod. They're just not easy to put in my car. So I didn't bring it. But 10 foot rods will definitely get you farther out. If you got a 12 foot rod, however far you want to throw, wing it out there. Can't hurt. Where I'm throwing this right now, I'm sitting right at the about probably halfway down a slope on a drop. This is the main channel side of the river. So I'm hoping fish are going to be hanging around that shelf and wanting to come up and grab my bait. Now what's great about this area is you got a lot of open bank uh, just over yonder on the other side of the ramp there's a steeper area where there's a lot of rock. Uh, I came here so uh, Mia could roam around and uh, I got plenty of open space to lay my gear out. Uh, but if it's just you and you're just out trying to have a good time, there's some pylons over there. And you can probably walk a good three, four miles down this bank as far as you want. And uh, there's a couple shelters that's built along uh, along here. You'll see tons of fork stakes in the ground. Lots of old fire pits where people came here and fished. So it's definitely a popular fishing area. It's not, nowhere I'm showing you guys are secret spots. They're all public access. People use them all the time. So if you're around the area and you haven't been to the Anderson Ferry to try to fish for some cats, come check it out. It's a good spot to catch bait with your net too. It's pretty crazy to see how high this river can get. If you look around over here, if you're fishing over here and you look around and look up into the trees, you can see how high this place gets. I mean, there's fence posts stuck in the trees about 15, 20 feet up. There's garbage and debris hung in branches you wouldn't think would be up there from flooding. Some of it's wind, some of it's human. But just take a look around, man. It's crazy how much garbage is in our rivers. And the evidence is clear when it's flooding. And after it recedes and you see all this stuff hanging, we need to do a better job at keeping our banks clean, guys. No matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are in the country, if you're around here, when you're done fishing, take a little bit of trash with you. Bring a bucket. I got my bucket for my cast net. So I'll stuff my cast net over top of the trash I pick up and carry it back to the car and throw it away when I get home. But try to pick up a little bit when you leave. Leave it better than you found it. <clears throat> Too large. Large bite. Come on, barge bite. Come on, ferry bite. Mia, don't bite. Barge bite. One of the most important things about bank fishing especially if you can't be mobile, is know the surroundings the best you can, know what kind of layout you're fishing in. Find something that's ideal, whether it's something that has a good bait supply where all these shad get chummed up here or there's a lot of cover, you know, there's a channel or an old creek bed at the bottom that they might be hiding in if you kind of know how the bottom is. But more importantly, change something doesn't matter if you change your bait doesn't matter if you change where you cast how far out you throw change something and we changed our bait we put a bigger fillet on with uh, more blood and guts on it and then we also put a smaller chunk of just the meat Within two minutes of casting, that big fillet was getting hit by something. Now, I don't know if there's any sizable fish here. I've only been here a few times. The 
great Miami is just it's my home that's where I like to fish I don't come to the Ohio nowhere near as much as I do the great Miami because I love flatheads but I have heard and seen big fish caught here and I know they come here often in all different sizes and it's a crapshoot whenever you go to a spot no matter how many times you've been there sometimes you don't get anything sometimes you get everything what bank fishing is all about. Sitting here on a log, chilling with the dog, hoping to catch a nice hog. Did I mention this is a really good ideal place to night fish? You got plenty of open area for a fire. You can park up there 24-7 as far as I know. I see people night fishing here all the time. There's evidence from all the old campfires that's sitting along the banks. There's even some trails where cars have drove through the, the woods here to get farther down without having to walk so much. Awesome night fishing spot. You guys can see that action. Flathead rods getting some hits. They're light taps. Probably a small channel or blue. Could be a gar. If you're ever on the Ohio River, don't ever forget about the long nosed guard. They're in here too. Something's definitely fooling with it. Little taps like that, if it's a small fish, it's hard to tell. It's not like he's going to bend the rod, it'll just bounce a lot. You almost just have to take a chance on it. I wonder what's more frustrating to you guys. Leave your answer in the comments. Catching a fish and it getting off or breaking the line or just constantly getting the bite but it never committing. For me, I think it's more frustrating to just constantly get the bite like I am right now. I don't know if it's gar, I don't know if it's small cats, but something keeps pecking at that tip and just not taking it. And it's driving me crazy. Even if I fought a big fish, even if it could have been the best fish I've ever caught and it got away right at the bank, at least I got to see it, at least I got to feel it. This, all I get to do is just Watch this, it's driving me insane. Well guys, with this last barge bite coming up, I think we're gonna call it a day. We're out of time. We didn't get nothing at this spot. We almost got something at the second spot and we did get something at the first spot. So all in all, it wasn't a bad little adventure. I hope you learned something today. I hope this shows people that they do have some places they can access a bank fish. And in the next video, we're going to tell you how to go on your electronics and look for places before you even leave the house. So hopefully it'll help you find spots like these to go try them out. I hope you guys consider subscribing if you liked what you've seen. Thanks for following along with us. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at Whisker Sticks LLC and visit our website, whiskerstixfishing.com. we got a big sale going on all month of April, 10% off everything in store with bank uh ugh, with promo code bank life 10 go check it out whiskerstixfishing.com before that barge gets too loud i'm gonna head out of here and get stuff to the car thanks for watching god bless tight lines and we'll see you in the next video take care